Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail and I'm extremely happy today because we've got somebody really special on our television program. My guests are Janine Beard and her husband John Beard. Uh, where You live in Pennsylvania somewhere, right? In Russell. Russell, Pennsylvania. And they've come up from Russell to be on my program because uh, they have a really important message to teach. Now Janine is a registered nurse. Um, and John, you're, you're in banking, is that I'm right? in banking. I'm the farm hand that <laughs> the supports, farm hand, supports uh, the food effort. And uh, you have a farm called Crooked Cabin Farm. We Correct. do. We do. We, uh, we stumbled on it a few years ago mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere. It was a decrepit little falling down place and we fixed it up and through the efforts of what Janine's going to be talking about today, we've turned it into an organic farm that grows lots of organic produce. And we, we share that with our Amish friends, with anybody who's looking for produce. And we use it for Janine's cooking classes and a host of needs that will be unveiled in the next 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, Janine, um, you got interested. You, uh, the two of you eat a totally plant-based diet. And uh, you have a story as to what led you to this. Would you tell our viewing audience? I would love to. About four years ago, I had um, gotten up in the morning and realized something was wrong. I'm over 60, and uh, there were over 30 things wrong with me, from high blood pressure, prediabetes, even, even diabetic symptoms, uh, neuropathy. I couldn't feel my hands and my feet. I had massive headaches. There were uh, 30 different things wrong. And that's when I decided to go to a uh, functional medicine uh, physician in Ohio who put me on a plant-based diet. Were any of these uh, things that were wrong with you life-threatening, do you think? Well, I think a combination of all of them can be life-threatening. Mm -hmm. uh, diabetes can be life-threatening. High blood pressure can be life-threatening. So the answer to that would be yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. Is it safe to say that diabetes and high blood pressure are precursors to some other problems? I think I've heard you say that high blood pressure means you have heart disease. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. Yes. And with diabetes, there's a multitude of things that can go wrong. So that's when whole plant-based nutrition became uh, an important part because I was told to eat plant-based for three weeks and after three weeks, 29 of the 30 symptoms disappeared completely. Mm -hmm. Uh, my lab results w became normal for the first time in about 35 years, and um, I was hooked. Mm -hmm. And you said that uh, the medical profession really did not help. <laughs> no, not the standard um, <laughs> medical profession. Uh -huh. um, unfortunately, and including the nursing profession, we're not taught nutrition mm -hmm. in our education. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. That's very unfortunate. Uh, nurses may get a couple hours more than even physicians do, but um, I, I think that trend is beginning to change because people are finding that whole plant-based nutrition, um, eating fruits and vegetables, nuts and grains and seeds, and no processed and no refined foods um, can reverse diseases um, including cancers, heart disease, diabetes, and the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, I think that people that have diabetes have a lot of trouble believing that that can be reversed. <laughs> that one is probably easier than most. You think so? Um, absolutely, oh. we, we know so. Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of, I'm also a holistic nutritionist, so a lot of the clients that come in with diabetes uh, no longer have it now. Uh, type, type 1 is one that can only, um, it can help tremendously by reducing their insulin mm -hmm. intake, but um, type 2 diabetes is totally reversible. can be reversed. Mm -hmm. You said hard to believe. When we came into this a few years ago, it was worse than hard to believe. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. We are former mm -hmm. reformed, we're Kansas City Barbecue Society judges. Oh, we've no. been through the classes. We know how to oh. judge the right chicken. We, oh, we no. know this stuff. And we were actually teaching courses on how to prepare wild game and make oh. it palatable. Oh, so no. we taught cooking classes. And, and when Janine first came across this and said, look at this, our natural reaction was the same as 
most people's, are you crazy? Those people are wackadoodles. And we used to make light fun of some of our friends who ate this way. And now, lo and behold, three years later, we're wackadoodles. <laughs> but what a difference has made in our life. It's unbelievable. It, yes, uh, to think that you actually teach classes yes, we, on it. We do. Uh, we te teach classes now. Uh, we have organic cooking classes. Mm -hmm. Most people don't think that um, it's, it's easy to eat this way because mm -hmm. it's non-traditional, mm -hmm. um, but it's just the opposite. It's, it's very, actually easy. Very, very easy actually to easier. eat this way. Yeah, because I can remember, um, you know, I only cooked meat, cooked and ate meat really until I was 25 and I gave up eating all meat. But what I remember about it was what a hard, what a difficult mess it was to clean up afterwards. <laughs> Stuck on greasy messes. <laughs> and, so and, um, and the health risks. Um, in in one of the studies that I think it was Dr. Greger's folks did, they cooked chicken, mm -hmm. and we also we have the best chicken barbecue in the whole world. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. not hubris. That's just fact. Mm -hmm. But we had to give it up. Mm -hmm. um, but when we cook chicken. They, did, they, they checked the kitchen for bacteria when they're done and of course found all kind of bacteria. So they went back into the folks and said, okay, use the bleach solution, pre-bleach, cook the chicken, bleach afterwards. They went back in, still, still had bacteria. Oh. They went back in a third time and said, this, this, and used the same type health protocols they'd use in a hospital, still had bacteria. If you cook meat, and especially poultry, you're going to have bacteria. Oh yeah and, yeah. and we just, I mean, how many, this morning on the radio driving in here, three or four kids died from, or one e. died from E. coli, Escherichia coli, the, the bacteria. Oh that yeah. comes from there, oh, several yeah. more sick. The stuff in meat, it can kill you, unfortunately. It can, it can. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> it didn't with me, you know. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still here and, and haven't, haven't had any, let's see, I think maybe, uh, approximately 45 years since Wonderful. I ate any Good for meat. You. Wonderful. So um, uh, it took a lot longer with the dairy products and so forth. I remember I made gradual changes over the course of my adult life uh, where I would, uh, I think the dairy product that I gave up first was actually the milk. I still continued to consume some yogurt and some cheese and certain recipes because I didn't know if I could make them taste right without it. But um, even just giving up the meat made a big difference in how I felt. Uh, so, um, but anyways, uh, like, like I, I was telling you earlier, you know, our problems are blessings in disguise and we might not, uh, if I hadn't had an anxiety disorder, and decided to start practicing yoga and giving up meat, um, um, I might be dead by now, you know. Absolutely. So, um, I, We're not supposed to talk about this, but when you told us your age, I was shocked. Were you really? Because people that eat this way age slow, more slowly, mm -hmm. um, do better. Mm -hmm. and, milk, you talked milk product. When I was a youth, I used to drink a gallon of milk every day, and I had horrible skin. I was teased through high school and college for acne. We came to find out that milk is one of those things that just destroys skin. Oh, so oh yeah, it does a lot of damage. It really does. Um, where should we start now? Uh, should we talk about the books or go to the PowerPoint presentation? Well, you know, you asked Janine about, about her, her condition, mm -hmm. and she's taking care of 29 of those things and working on the 30th. The 30th was a thyroid condition. Hypothyroidism. Which is going to take a couple of years to get through. But when, when we tell people that you can cure diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and you can cure heart disease, we get a lot of skepticism, as you might imagine. Mm -hmm. could, could we talk about a few of Janine's cases. She's, she's got about 150 people, but we've got some. Well, I was told that I had thyroid cancer at the age of 54. Um, and that was when I went from, when I gave up the last little bit of cheese and yogurt that I was eating. Um, once it became a totally plant-based diet, um, 
the problem went away and I got to keep my thyroid gland, which most people don't when they're told that they right. have thyroid cancer. So, and, and all that cancer thing, I know it's an aside, but can you tell, uh, yell about the lady on that, that had the, that sat next to you that had the, was pancreatic cancer? Uh, oh. Yes, there was a woman. Which is a death sentence. Yeah, there was a woman who was in hospice with four stage pancreatic mm -hmm. cancer. And um, I was talking to her about her situation and her daughter took her out of hospice, took her home, put her on a 100% plant-based diet. And uh, seven years later, she is um, wonderfully healthy and alive without any pancreatic cell Right, uh, right. I've heard that 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 happens, and, mm -hmm. and I guess you could say it happened to me, you know. Yeah. Sure. But, uh, it sure. does. It so, does. But we've got, um, Janine has about 150 patients right now mm -hmm. that have come to her saying, some saying, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. Some saying, my health is poor. Mm -hmm. And we've got two or three that we've got some, uh, uh, Chris has queued up, uh, if the viewers would like to look at some of these cases just to see some of the effects. And th these are not the outliers, these are the everyday thing. And then maybe we can talk about the Whirly, Betts, sure. Warren Hospital experience. Sure. So mm -hmm. if, if Chris could pull up slide 10 there, oh. I mean, it'll take you 10, 11, okay. and 12 with, through three of her patients. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, one of the things that happened to me is I'm so passionate to help others. And this was one of the patients, Alan, at 64, his cholesterol is 285. He was on a statin, or Crestor, called Crestor. Um, of course, with that particular drug, uh, muscles lock up, and physicians said, you know, just increase the dosage and we'll see what we can do. But he moved to whole plant-based diet. Six weeks later, his cholesterol is 156, and he is no longer on the medication. And Gail, that's six weeks. That's not six months. That's no, not a regimen right. two years. That's six that, that's, that's amazing. Well, you know, the first uh, couple of months after I was told I had thyroid cancer, um, it only took a month uh, for me to be feeling better than I ever had in my entire life. Right. Even, even right. better than uh, when Same I here. had been very young, you right. know. Right. right. So that's what happened to me. It was in three weeks that 29 things disappeared. And to me as a nurse, that was pretty much an impossibility, I thought. Mm -hmm. um, you know, medic medically, my education, it didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. But then I started reading all the literature. Dr. T. Colin Campbell from the China study, he's a Nobel Prize nominee in nutrition from Cornell, is now a very good friend of ours. And all the research that he's done was unbelievable. Uh, you, you can't deny the research projects. One is milk. He would give, um, in milk there's a protein called casein protein. Oh yeah. And yeah. in that protein molecule that was given to rats over the course of several years, they developed these cancer tumors. Then when they were then um, removed the, the casein protein nutrition and given them whole plant-based type of nutrition, the cancer disappeared. So one of the things that uh, we gave up first was milk mm -hmm. and then, uh, and meat and now uh, eggs. So we are completely, totally mm -hmm. plant-based. But a lot of our patients are that, are that way. It's the same thing. Their reversals are almost, uh, for instance, several patients that had high blood pressure within four days uh, are no longer needing medication. It's amazing. Right. Tell slide number 11 has Big Dave. When you asked Big Dave what he wanted with his steak, he said more steak. Oh. Um, but if we can go to slide 11, Chris, Dave suffered from uh, epilepsy. Oh. He was a super heavy meat eater. Uh, took many medications for his epilepsy, had several episodes, and he moved to a whole plant-based nutrition in a month, lost 35 pounds. Within three months, he was off the medication and lost another 65 more pounds and no longer has any symptoms of his epilepsy. Really? So, yeah. So oh, we know, wow. Gail, that it, it cures, and, and, and it, it doesn't cure. I mean, no, nothing that Janine prescribes or you eat cures. I mean, God cures us if, if we're to be cured. But if you take away the nasty stuff, our bodies will correct and, and get rid of diabetes type 2. They get rid of epilepsy. They get rid of, uh, what's the experiment Campbell just did? 20, 20 patients on um, 
uh, MS. Mul multiple sclerosis. Not just he just had 20 patients on multiple sclerosis, completely gone, 20 out of 20. And the new math says that's right around 100%. Um, <laughs> it, it takes away heart disease. It takes away these things. And in fact, on heart disease, Millie, I think your favorite person, uh, slide number 12. Check Millie out. Uh, Millie, at age 80, a young 80, she was in hospice care, which everyone knows what that means. Congestive heart failure, which so many people today have, she only had 10% heart function left. So anyone out there who ha knows uh, about that is 90% of her heart had, um, had been deteriorated. Her daughter took her home, put her on a plant-based diet, completely plant-based diet, and today at 86, she is swimming four times a week and still drives. So the, these are miraculous recoveries from not medication, not surgical techniques, uh, not medical treatments, but from food that you just go to your grocery store and you just decide to eat a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Whenever um, we have a conversation on Fresh Perspectives, about uh, um, you know a plant-based diet and you know so many people say uh, you know they've got health insurance and and all that and everything and they say I can't live like that but I remember watching doctor um, let's see the one I'm trying to think of his name now uh, Eat to, wrote Eat to Live, Eat to Live, uh, well, sorry. it'll come to me when I quit, <laughs> when I quit trying, but he was do. I remember uh, watching a lecture of his on the PBS uh, television channel one time, and um, he's mentioning that people say, I can't live like that, and he goes, well, I, I don't want to have diabetes and have to inject myself uh, every day and you know he's mentioning all these things he doesn't want to have to do having surgery you know for heart disease and all of these things and or having a stroke and not being able to move he goes I can't live like that exactly um, and Basically, that's how I feel about it. I wouldn't want to have a stroke and have at least one whole side of my body paralyzed. And uh, it, it, it just, uh, um, it, it's just the opposite. And people think that it's hard. People think that it's harder. What, what do you say to the viewing audience about Well, that? I think number one, everyone has a choice. You know, I, mm -hmm. I would love to see everyone do this because uh, I know what it can do to the body. Whether you're a brand new infant mm -hmm. or whether you're 100 years old, uh, it can make a difference in your life. Mm -hmm. The way you think, the way you uh, work, your energy levels, uh, just from head to toe, it changes your body and your life. Mm -hmm. So it, so definitely it is a choice mm -hmm. for it's never too late and that, that's the other thing it's never too late to make the change. No. Um, even mm -hmm. if you're in fourth stage cancers, um, I if I had fourth stage cancers, boy, this is something that that I would at least try. Mm -hmm. Try mm -hmm. it just for a few days. We did an experiment in Warren, Pennsylvania uh, last year with over 70, uh, 70 different people, three different corporations. And for 10 days, 70 people went on a whole plant-based diet, very strict. We fed them for, for just 10 days. You fed them to make sure they stuck to it? Yes. Okay. And, and there was competition. Uh, there are three companies. There's Betts Industries, mm -hmm. who does mechanicals in Warren. There's Worley Industries, who mm -hmm. does the drinking cups that go all around the world, and oh, there's Warren General yeah. Hospital. We had one versus the other versus the other. Mm -hmm. So they were taking it seriously, very oh. competitive. They each had teams, and okay. there was a huge trophy involved, a three-foot trophy of a beautiful trophy mm -hmm. full of fruits and vegetables. Uh, so I am sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Do we, have, we don't have the slide on that. We don't, but I've got the stats. Go ahead. 
Well, what happened is these people at the end of 10 days, before they started, they took their blood levels. Mm -hmm. And we checked specifically for LDL, which is the bad, bad cholesterol, cholesterol, right? We took, checked for cholesterol overall and triglycerides. This is 10 days of eating plant-based. Mm -hmm. Not once in that 10 days was there a salad in there because plant-based isn't salads. There was good plant-based, whole foods, plant-based foods. Mm -hmm. At the end of 10 days, we again took their blood levels. The average drop across 70 people, the average drop was 18% cholesterol drop. That's 30, 30 some points. 17% triglyceride uh, drop and a 21% LDL drop. So these people's health improved dramatically. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include the side effects like weight loss, and all of a sudden sleeping better and waking up. And, and you probably wouldn't appreciate as much as, as we do because we're recent converts the last three years. You've been doing this forever, but we do a lot of farm work. Oh, and I can remember yes. waking up one morning going, I don't hurt. Mm -hmm. I don't feel bad. My joints don't hurt anymore. So right. we saw this across 70 people in 10 days we can replicate it, it can be replicated over and over. It's that quick. Yeah, you hear uh, that from a lot of people that uh, they quit getting, they thought, you know, it was their age or something, that they were having all these aches and pains and then they, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, a certain amount of time goes by and all of a sudden I'm not getting aches and pains anymore. Exactly. Well, so. if, if I could rat out my wife, my wife was doing some staining on our, on our cabin, mm -hmm. and she misstepped and missed the rung of the ladder. She fell off the ladder, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. and she tore her kneecap. Uh-oh. So it was off to Cleveland Clinic, and why don't you tell them about the, the, what they told you to expect in your timeline and what actually happened? So post-surgically, the physician said it'll be probably about six to eight weeks before you'll be able to be ambulatory, be able to walk. Um, it, it'll probably be uh, two, three weeks before you can even climb the staircase. Literally, it was within 24 hours I climbed 13 steps without pain. There was no pain. I had no crutches. Uh, I, had, I gave them up. And I called Dr. Campbell mm -hmm. and said, what's up with this? Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And he said they are seeing that over and over and over again with plant-based nutrition. Um, they're, they're trying to reach out for a new study on pain with surgery. But if someone goes on whole plant-based pre-surgically, if they can, and then post-surgically, the rehabilitation is not, none other than miraculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, I, every once in a while, um, I will hear a young mother complain that her baby will not eat meat when, she start, when they start feeding the baby solid foods. The baby will not eat meat. And they are so worried about what's going to happen to the baby. You know, I think we must be born uh, somehow knowing that uh, we shouldn't be eating meat. There must be a reason that babies are born not wanting to eat meat because this is such a common complaint that I hear from young mothers. Um, do you think that we are born you know, for not having a taste for that, but as we're forced to eat it, we get used to it, maybe? Well, here's the thing about meat, eggs, and dairy. Um, well, let's go back to the definition of whole plant-based. Whole mm -hmm. plant-based is all the vegetables in the world, all the fruits in mm -hmm. the world. Nuts, seeds, whole grains, mm -hmm. not the new grains that we have today, but the whole grains, the ancient grains. Right. Uh, no processed, no refined foods. Uh, very, very little oil. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some controversy on that, but mm -hmm. no, we say no oil, but very little oil, and and sugars have to have to be unrefined. Oh yes, and the yes. natural sugars. Yes. Uh, the the thing about uh, infants is that, and I tell young mothers organizations is that the first thing they need to do is breastfeed their infants until at least six months mm -hmm. minimum. Uh, preferably up to one solid year. Mm -hmm. 
Then we decide to give them french fries and McDonald's and we give them chocolate cake and brownies. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that we become addicted. Mm -hmm. The chemical substances in those things allow us to become addicted just no different than even a, a drug would, would cause an addiction. Mm -hmm. So children become addicted, adults become addicted to food. Uh, that's a bad thing. In mm -hmm. our presentations that we give throughout is that one of the things that we're asked invariably every single time, I can't think of a time that we haven't been asked, is what about the protein? And mothers and fathers tend to think that children need to have uh, you know, the meat in the protein mm -hmm. and the meat mm -hmm. in the eggs and the meat, um, or the protein in the milk. Mm -hmm. uh, slide number 15, if, if he could please pr pull that one up, is where do I get my protein? For adults, we need 50 grams uh, per day. Lentils, you can get 18 grams per cup. Mm -hmm. That's like a, a, you know, a cup of soup. Beans, 12 to 15 grams per cup. Lima beans, green beans, almonds. And then there's other high protein foods that we don't even think about. Chia seeds, pistachios, pumpkin seeds. Let's go to peanuts, corn, mushrooms. Sweet potatoes has it. Wheat, uh, brown rice, barley, sunflower seeds. And the list actually goes on and on and on of where we can get our protein. Mm -hmm. We are actually getting too much protein in the standard American diet mm -hmm. because oh, of the Oh, definitely, meat. yeah. Way yeah. too much. In fact, on a totally plant-based diet, we actually get more than we really have to have oh, to be healthy. More. We do. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. On, on that subject of, of, of children eating, our dentition, our teeth are not built. We're not carnivores. We like to think we are, especially us guys. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're doing that Kansas City stuff, yeah, I'm a meat eater. But no, our teeth aren't like a tiger's teeth. We have no. modified teeth. We are grain eaters and plant eaters right, right. By, by, by birth. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we're going to a, a certain young little man's birthday party this afternoon at 3.30 who's been raised. It's a grandchild. I'm not going to tell you who's. <laughs> um, but it's been ra he's been raised on plant-based. And that little guy loves a bowl of beans. He loves fruits. He loves vegetables. Not much of a meat eater. Uh, it's almost a forced type thing. Yeah, I, I do think it's a forced thing. because They force the kids to get into the habit yes. of eating it because you hear it from so many young mothers that their baby doesn't want to eat meat. And I'll, if I say something to them like, um, well, I don't eat meat and I'm perfectly healthy, they'll go, well, you're an adult. You're not still growing, you know. And they mu and they can't believe that the kids don't need it right. to grow up, you know. Well, I, under so I understand the concern mm -hmm. uh, because it's traditional mm -hmm. over the course of several past several decades mm -hmm. to eat meat mm -hmm. for the children, uh, but they just need to educate themselves to find out that protein really is in whole plant-based nutrition completely, um, and and even. Uh, total a total nutrition value and more what they call the phytonutrients or the phytochemicals mm -hmm. for our body are more in the plants and uh, than mm -hmm. they are in the meat eggs and dairy and not only that meat eggs and dairy is full of saturated fats that will cause children to have what they call atherogenesis or atherosclerosis yeah. oh. at uh, even at the age of 10 they're finding oh that in gosh. studies now at the age of 10 so I, I would welcome young mothers to contact us. Uh, we can we can do presentations for their for for them even individually because I'd mm -hmm. like I'd love to see mm -hmm. uh, little mm -hmm. children on a whole plant based. So nutrition. how can people get a hold of you uh, to uh, for these classes? We uh, and I should have brought a slide that we posted for that. We're at Crooked Cabin Farm at gmail.com. Okay. Crooked Cabin Cro Farm. Crooked Cabin Farm at gmail.com. And we have a website, www.crookedcabinfarm.com. Okay. We have some pictures too. Okay. Yeah, we've got, in, in fact, we have, if, if, it, if we get slow, we have some pictures of the farm in case anybody wants to come out and just visit the farm. It's an organic farm. If people want to come and learn about the lifestyle, and, and, and I don't want to say make it sound like it's some bizarre, crazy lifestyle. We shop at Aldi's and Walmart and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. We just don't choose to eat meat, dairy, or eggs because we feel better without doing mm -hmm. it. The uh, cooking classes are not your typical kind of cooking mm -hmm. classes. Uh, it, it's about a two to three hour cooking class. Uh, 
they're fed by the recipes that are presented, but it's more uh, on nutrition and health and uh, uh, answer their questions about their own personal issues, et cetera, for uh, those three hours. So w it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a, a closed, it's a, we only have 10 to 15 uh, women and men, actually, mm -hmm. sometimes more men than women, mm -hmm. because most people today, when they're presented with an option to, be, to feel better, uh, to change their health, to reduce their medications, to live longer, to help their children, they uh, they say this is this is simple. Mm -hmm. This is an easy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I wanted to comment on, as far as living longer, um, not only can you live longer, but it's my understanding that your quality of life at the there end. You go. Uh, is better and you don't have to mm -hmm. suffer, you mm -hmm. know, really suffer. You know, um, w the last few weeks my mother was alive, we had hospice helping us with her. And the one nurse, um, I got to talking uh, with her about um, a plant-based diet and how important it is to people's health and everything. And this winter one day I ran into her in the grocery store and um, I was expressing my condolences to her because she had not too long before lost both her both her uh -huh. husband and her father had died within two weeks of each other and but anyways um, when she saw me when I was uh, doing that at the store she said I've been thinking about you a lot lately and I said oh really why is that and she goes you know it's about that diet that you talk about she goes, she's a hospice nurse now, and she goes, lately a lot of my patients have been asking me if that would help. And um, I said it would. And, I, and then I recommended to her a couple of DVDs to watch. One of them was the Forks For Over somebody. Knives one, mm -hmm. was one of the ones. And uh, there's another one that's more recent. It's called What the Health. Right. And it has Dr. Gregor, uh, yeah. N Neil Barnard. Uh -huh. um, I, Dr. Esselstyn. I, Esselstyn is uh -huh. in it. Uh -huh. I don't think Colin Campbell was, but you know, it had all of these, it has all of these really famous doctors that have done all of these studies on it, you know, and I said, See if you can, uh, I said, do you get, I, I said, I th heard that you could get it on Netflix. Do you get Netflix? And she goes, well, actually, I do. Uh, she goes, somebody gave it, uh, got it for me for a Christmas present. And right. so she said she was, I haven't seen her since, but she said she was going to go see about watching them. And I, I think that you can watch them on uh, YouTube. YouTube also. Yes. Uh, YouTube has... Um, Oh, what's the first one? Uh, Plant Pure Nation. Plant, Plant Pure, Pure Nation. Nation. Plant Pure Nation, one of the early ones on YouTube. Uh, it, it's free, mm -hmm. the Netflix ones, but they're great, great pieces of, of documentary mm -hmm. because unlike so many of our political do documentaries that are commentaries and opinions, mm -hmm. these are scientifically based research. Mm -hmm. The scientific evidence is incontrovertible. Mm -hmm. you, you, you don't have to like it, but you can't find fault with the research because mm -hmm. these folks have done the research and repeated it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it saves lives. We have one 28-year-old gentleman who all of his family history has all been of heart disease. And he had been at a luncheon with John and said, I have no options. Uh, all my uncles, my grandfathers, my father all died of, of heart disease. And this 28-year-old man with a family uh, is on, was on several medications. Oh, really? At only age 28? 28. 28. Oh and my gosh! And he said, "I'm, I'm probably doomed to die around the age of 40, like all the others." So we. So said, they all died around 40. Yes. Oh my gosh! So he has gone on a whole plant-based diet, and within a month. All of his numbers are now normal. Normal. He's off of every single medication. His cardiologist said, you don't need to come back here like you were before. Mm -hmm. He said, just come every couple of years and we'll check you out. But mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong anymore. 
And it's just from whole plant-based nutrition. Mm -hmm. And there's a key number in there. His cholesterol has dropped, total cholesterol has dropped below 150. Mm -hmm. and, and the research says that there's never been a documented case of a heart attack for anyone whose cholesterol is below 150. So he's out of the danger zone. He may be the first, who knows? Mm -hmm. But he's given up his cheeseburgers and his french fries mm -hmm. and now he's eating good quality food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What a difference it makes. Yeah. You talked state quality of living. When we first met Dr. Campbell, who was 85, I think, he was limping a little. And we said, what did you do? He said, oh, I was playing racquetball with my grandkids and I went out to, to hit one and, and I broke my hip falling oh, on the racquetball. No. 85 <laughs> years old, he's playing racquetball with his grandkids. <laughs> it is a quality of life. Yeah. This is the first generation in America where our kids will live about two and a half years less than we live. Mm -hmm. First time ever in the history mm -hmm. of our country where our kids are living less than we are. Well, and you know, I, I, uh, there are a lot of families where um, the parents are having to go through the grief of losing a child, a child. to uh, health issues. Health issues. Yes. Yeah. Here's yes. one for you. And we went to, to, to high school back when TV was black and white. I'll mm -hmm. admit it. And all mm -hmm. our phones were hooked into the wall. Right. We're a right. bad generation. There's a study that just came out, we read it, I think, two weeks ago. The incidence of colorectal cancer for 30-year-old, 20 and 30 years old, is going through the roof. Oh my God, colorectal really? Cancer. Mm -hmm. we People never in, heard their about that. in their 20s are getting colon cancer? Mm -hmm. And we never uh -huh. no. heard of that. And no. again. Well, you know, um, when I was a little girl, um, back in those days that you were talking about, if you heard of a child that had died, it was usually because of an accident. Correct. They drowned or were in right. some other kind of an accident. Right. But now it's fairly common right. to hear about children having cancer. Exactly. Right. And even things such as autism, uh, that that's, that's growing and increasing. Uh, that whole plant-based nutrition with all the anxiety, depression issues uh, whole plant-based nutrition is one of the treatments that I would highly, highly recommend. Uh, there are so many things. The list is not just heart disease, diabetes, and cancer mm -hmm. alone, even though those are the three biggies, mm -hmm. is that there are now 151, I believe, autoimmune disorders, uh, where yes. just a few years ago there was 126, and then I just researched it and there was 151. So, um, yeah, here's a list, if he can go to number nine. Okay. Um, this is a list of just a few of the things that can be reversed um, and, and suspended through whole plant-based nutrition. And you can see the amazing numbers of things that people have today, including pain, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We have several cases of that that has, has virtually been reversed. Uh, migraine headaches, something simple like that. And hypertension is the easy one. Diabetes is a simple one. Most ca cardiovascular disease. Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn has a book on reversing heart disease and he's just one of many now who uh, use that as a treatment program. There is a uh, hospital in New York City that now has a whole plant-based nutrition treatment program, which we are thrilled. I noticed that you have macular degeneration on the list. And, um, but I'm thinking in terms of just even nearsightedness and farsightedness and cataracts and yes. things like that. It's my understanding uh, that it you improves. can improve your eyesight Absolutely. with a totally plant-based diet. Yes, I had myself and I, one of the 29 <laughs> things that were healed was I had severe dry eye. Mm -hmm. The ophthalm ophthalmologist said I probably had one of the worst cases that she'd ever seen. Oh, is that right? And mm -hmm. uh, that within three weeks disappeared. Wow. Yeah, one of the challenges for me, prior to entering banking, I, was, I taught biology and chemistry mm -hmm. for several mm -hmm. years. Janine's also a biology mm -hmm. background. When you look at this stuff, it seems it's that too good to be true stuff. It sounds like the over the counter, take this and you'll be well medicine. We, they sell them and market them every day. Mm -hmm. I had trouble accepting this until I got to the science of it. It was the science of it and the, the way they conducted the experiments and, and the blind studies that convinced me this stuff, we, we sit sometimes and go, is there really something you can do that is this easy that cures so many things? And the answer repeatedly comes back, 
Yes. Yes, yes. Over and over. And, yes. and I marvel at it. Our, our bodies are wonderfully made to correct themselves, but we keep giving them the stuff. You talked about autism. My gosh. We didn't have it growing up. Mm -mm. We didn't have those No, I, I never heard of anything like that when I was a kid. Yeah, and now everybody's got it. And you look back, something you talked about a few minutes ago, when our kids grow up, we move them from breast milk not to plants and nutrient loading things. Mm -hmm. We give them hamburgers and we give them french fries. I sat with a guy just last week and, and he went from 300 pounds down to about 125 going plant-based. Now this is not a weight loss plan. No. It happens. It happens. It happens, but that's not the primary use. Right. But he said, I was always hungry. There was a starving man inside that 300 pound fat body because I'd always eat and I was never satisfied. He said, I eat this stuff now and I'm satisfied. And, and we've seen the same thing. We eat and we don't get hungry. Right, right. Um, I just eat my three meals a day and I have no, uh, I'm not, not tempted to eat between meal snacks. So. And, and if you do, in this lifestyle, it's okay. It's okay you because, eat plants because you're, you're eating healthy weight. foods. It's amazing. Yeah. You can eat what you want, when you want, how right. you want, where you want. Right. We made a, for one of Janine's cooking classes, and we brought some, we'll, we'll show you some of the recipes in a minute. Okay. We, we made a potato salad one night with a plant-based mayonnaise. Oh, yes, you mm -hmm. can get them now. Oh, we made our own. You we, made we, your we own. We make our own. We're, we're, we're cheap. We don't like to pay the prices. <laughs> so we ate this mayonnaise and went, whoa, this is good. Mm -hmm. So we put it on that potato salad and went, that's really good. Well, the next morning was Saturday morning, so we got up and like, what would you like for breakfast? Potato salad. So we had <laughs> plant-based potato <laughs> salad for breakfast. It was really good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you can eat this anytime you want everything. And, and what's the rule for what to eat? Eight any time and anything as long as it's on as long whole, as it's whole on the whole foods right. plant based right. and diversify you know make sure they're eating the rainbow all the different colors uh, that there are uh, choose things at the store that are different from what you're normally used to uh, the palate changes in 30 days so if you're a you're a fat and sugar addictor then in 30 days if you go on whole plant based you won't consume and want to consume the things that were high fat and high sugar after 30 to 45 mm -hmm. days. It will, you'll, you'll mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, the big uh, thing they have trouble giving up is cheese. Yes, fat. That's just we, fat. We make our own cheese. We out make of, it out of nuts. Out of nuts, nuts. exactly. We've got a book yes. called This Cheese yes. is Nuts. Yes, we have. Uh, somebody else introduced us to a recipe several years back to our group, you know, that meets once a month. And um, it was called macaroni and cheesy sauce. And it's mm -hmm. like um, sesame tahini, uh, cashew butter, uh, water, uh, nutritional yeast flakes, onion, garlic, uh, pimentos. Flax? I can't remember. M possibly a little bit of that. And uh, it makes uh, not only the best tasting uh, macaroni recipe, <laughs> you know, for people who have trouble giving up cheese, but I've also used it on as gravy on mashed potatoes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It's really on vegetables, you know. Um, it, just, it just goes wonderfully. And um, once you realize that dairy can cause all these cancers, mm -hmm. actually cause cancers, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't hard for me to say no mm -hmm. to dairy products. Mm -hmm. Yogurt, ice cream, mm -hmm. uh, we have a fantastic uh, whole plant-based ice cream that we eat that I can't, I could never even go back to the regular milk ice cream. But anything that has dairy products in it was one of the first things that was easy for us to give up, mm -hmm. including cheese. Mm -hmm. But again, cheese is so high in fat, and that's the part of the addiction pro process. Um, even if you talk about Wendy's, you oh yeah study. We we will while we're pulling that slide up. The um, you mentioned a whole list of ingredients that that went into what you ate. Mm -hmm. I know that when we first moved into this, she'd say stuff like that. She'd say, 
the chia seed and this and that. And I'd go, what the heck are those? <laughs> uh, those are all, yeah. and, and now those, every one of those is available at your local Walmart or your... your right, exactly. You, they're, they're becoming yeah, more I popular. I, I hope that's a good sign. I hope it means that more and more people are getting interested in eating healthier. It does. And, and we, we come from a farm background and farm community. Uh, the, the milk usage is down 30% in mm -hmm. America. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's caused some problems. We just, the dairy just closed in Erie. What mm -hmm. was that, Meadow mm -hmm. Gold closed? Because milk consumption is, are, is down. Kids are not eating what they used to. Mm -hmm. They're moving to the plant milk. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a sad thing because of dairy. Just but because they're putting people out of work, right. you mean. Yes. Yes. But there was a gentleman, if you watch uh, Plant Pure Nation on YouTube, there was a gentleman who went through that 10-day food thing, just like what we did at Worley. And, it, and he was a dairy farmer. Mm -hmm. So they sat down, down with him afterwards and said, you've seen this, what now? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, we've got to make a change. Mm -hmm. We can't continue putting this out. So they sold off the dairy cows, went to starting putting in the plant, and Janine just finished up some research for an Amish group we're working with about switching from traditional farming to this organic plants. Do you want to talk about that while I look down for, to find another slide? Absolutely. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, we'll have to get moving along uh, here with the slides yeah, and the We have so the, much, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, like Janine said before we came on, uh, I could talk about this all day. <laughs> Um, we're allowed to run over a little bit if you want to. What's our time that we have left? Um, 11 minutes and 13 seconds. Oh, we yeah, have plenty of time. Okay. But well, why don't you talk uh, about... Um, the profitability. Right. The, the, the new research out shows that the standard farming community that now moves to organic farming community increased their profitability by an average of 35 percent. Oh my gosh. Now that's terrific. A little terrific. over a third. Yep. Wow. Um, it is, is over a third which is a high profitability for any farmers. Uh, there, there have been s several of them. So now in this community, in our community, I work a lot with the Amish in their um, medical needs and trying to convert the Amish into, because they create a lot of the a produce lot of for the farmers markets etc mm -hmm. is uh, to, to change over to an organic farming mm -hmm. to get rid of the pesticides to get rid of the fertilizers uh, the GMOs use heirloom seeds etc that is really a lot lesser expensive oh, yeah. for farming yeah. than traditional farming is but the, we we're talking about the, the cheese and the slide number is that 13. 13 slide 13 this is phenomenal Phenomenal. The, you know, the U.S. government has the program where we subsidize farmers, and dairy farmers especially. Oh, yeah, especially. yeah. Well, they, they subsidize the farmers and buy all this milk, and then the question of what to do with it. They give some to food lunch programs and things. Right. But the, the USDA, and this is out of a USDA report to Congress, none of the statistics or things we talk about, Gail, are made up. We can cite medical research <laughs> or congressional records anywhere. But look at these three promotions. Our, our USDA went to Wendy's and helped Wendy's create this Cheddar Lover Bacon Cheeseburger promotion. 2.25 million pounds of cheese, which translates to 380 tons of fat, 1.2 tons of pure cholesterol, and we pretend as a people to be worried about obesity in our kids. Mm -hmm. My gosh, I wouldn't feed that to my animals. Yeah. They helped Pizza Hut develop this ultimate cheese pizza, a full pound of cheese in every pizza, 5 million pounds in six weeks. That more than doubled Wednesday, so that's you know, 760 tons of fat. Yeah, you know, uh, some of those pizza uh, places in recent years have come up with not only cheese on the top of the pizza, right. but the crust filled with cheese. This right. was the ultimate cheese pizza was the starter <laughs> mm -hmm. of that, developed with the help of our USDA folks. Well, you know, um, all of those ads we used to see back in the 1950s and like that when we were kids, that was uh, government propaganda uh, right. trying to get us to eat more of the stuff right. because they were subsidizing the dairy right. farmers. We don't like to go into the political aspects of this uh, because this is a nutrition and health reversing aspect. Mm -hmm. But if you look into the history of the meat, egg, and cheese industries, mm -hmm. you'll see that we have been brainwashed into thinking that we um, need against uh, whole plant-based nutrition. And whole plant-based nutrition is uh, lesser expensive 
ultimately less oh, yeah. expensive. Oh, yeah. And even at the farm, we teach how to dehydrate things and mm -hmm. um, how to how to freeze different uh, food things so that that people who can't afford what they think is organic, they can absolutely afford whole plant-based nutrition completely and mm -hmm. be healthier. <laughs> there, there is no money to be made in whole foods plant-based. Right. There's no American Dairy Association pushing to, right. to sell milk. Right, there's, right. there's no from, meat or from. egg group. In fact, breast cancer, Janine talked about milk. Milk specifically affects the protein, the casein, specifically affects the reproductive organs, be it in males or females. One of the, uh, several of the studies indicate that if you drink a glass of milk every day, you're increasing your risk of breast cancer 17%. 17%, 17%. each and every day. Right, yes. well, each, it, yes, if you drink a glass of milk each and every day, 17%. <laughs> that means three glasses of milk every day, which is what is recommended, is increasing the odds 51%. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that. That's, again, medical research. We mm -hmm. didn't make that it's up. It's been proven. <laughs> it's been demonstrated, again, you can't argue. Mm -hmm. you, Dr. Campbell says we feed, the, and they've done it with rats, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You feed the rats casein, protein, they develop cancer, take it away, it goes mm -hmm. away. Well, yeah, um, I remember one speaker mm -hmm. we had at one of our dinners was saying that if you eat like beef and pork once a day, you're doubling, or not once a day, I think it was once a week actually, uh, once a week, um, that you're doubling your risk of getting cancer. And if you eat those things twice a week, you're tripling your right. risk of getting cancer. Right. I mean, people think, well, maybe if I eat this once in a while, it's okay, but apparently it, it's not. It, it's, um, it's Russian roulette. Uh -huh. If you play uh -huh. with one bullet in the gun, you last longer than if you play with five bullets in the gun. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But ultimately, it catches up. Right, but it's a, when it's a we, risk. When, when, uh, when the Susie Coleman mm -hmm. Foundation, mm -hmm. Cancer Foundation. Right. One you hear about it all the time, right? right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, there was one time I saw it in the newspaper, uh, some prize-winning cow at the Dunkirk Fair or something like that. One summer was being gonna, the uh, money from selling that cow was gonna go to the Susan G. Coleman right. Foundation. And I'm thinking, um, excuse me, <laughs> right. you know. Exactly. You know who <laughs> one of their largest contributors are to the Susan B. Coleman Foundation? It's the American Dairy Association. Sure. And if you, um, in, in, in one of the things, one of the video folks went to talk to the director and said, why do you accept money from them when you know this is a problem? And he said, I didn't realize we were talking about that, this interview's over. So unfortunately, oh, yeah, there, yeah. there's money and yeah. politics and all these things. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, with the What the Health DVD when the guy who made the DVD and was interviewing people went to talk to the person and head of the American Dietetic Association. Exactly. And the guy got upset and left the room and wouldn't exactly. say another word. Right. Right. And we're, so, not, we're not about the politics of it, but we are about uh, the simplicity. This is so simple mm -hmm. to change your life. Mm -hmm. It is so simple and so inexpensive to change your life. And it costs you just a trip to a grocery store. Mm -hmm. to gather what you need to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. whether you're seemingly healthy now, because even at 10, like I said, they're seeing atherogenesis or atherosclerosis in 10 year olds. So whether you're seemingly healthy or whether you're ill, mm -hmm. is that this is mm -hmm. highly recommended. Even Hippocrates mm -hmm. said, let food be your medicine. Right, right. I remember running into somebody that I know in the grocery store after she had uh, been treated through the medical profession for thyroid cancer uh, and I saw her buying some ice cream I think it might have been like coming on Christmas mm -hmm. in a couple days or something like that and she um, was mentioning to me that um, well I said something to her you know you've had cancer now you shouldn't be eating ice cream and and she goes, um, oh, I'm not buying this for myself. I'm getting it for my grandkids. Oh, <laughs> oh, ouch. You would almost think that people would be more concerned about the children and the grandchildren yeah. than themselves, you help. know? Because, help. you know, now you're getting, now now something's getting started, you know? Yes. You know the saying, now it begins, you yes. know? 
Yeah. So. Uh, if, and I know we're running short of time, uh -huh. but if people want to know more about this, Janine has two presentations she does, and, and, and she's not charging. Her driver takes her. She does the presentation. <laughs> oh, you're the driver. <laughs> yes. This, this is kind of a ministry. Okay. Uh, there, there's okay. no money to be made in this because there's yeah, there's nothing no, to sell. Yeah, there's no money to be made at, on this TV program either because right. we're, just we're trying a 501-3C uh, right. TV right. studio. But you do accept contributions, right? Um, Sure you uh, I, um, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> to tell you the truth, you'd have to talk to one of the other guys. Well, Janine has two presentations. One is why whole food plant-based uh -huh. nutrition. And it, it, it's amazing. We, dock, we block it for an hour. Mm -hmm. It goes 45 minutes. We stop for questions. At mm -hmm. one hour we say, we're done officially. If you want to leave, go ahead. And an hour and a half later, Janine leaves because the people come up and, and pick brains. A lot of folks will then come to, to meet Janine and have personal counseling sessions. It is mm -hmm. amazing how many of our friends are sick out there. Mm -hmm. She also has one for aimed at young mothers about how to raise your children on this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. Janine, my child doesn't like, doesn't like that. What do I do when he screams for French fries? <laughs> you don't give it to them. <laughs> they won't starve. <laughs> eventually, eventually they will eat something. They will. They'll get hungry they enough will. they will eat something. They will. Now, before we close, we want to yes. mention the books. Now, you've seen this on Fresh Perspectives, those of you in the viewing audience, from a lot of other guests bring this on, <laughs> believe it or not, uh -huh. How Not to Die. Um, the China study, um, these other ones that I haven't actually gotten around, gotten a chance to read, but I'm going to a used book sale at the library when I leave here today, yeah. so that's where I get a lot of these, find a lot of these. This Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Caldwell Esselstyn. Yes. He is Cleveland an Clinic. amazing person. Cleveland Clinic, yes. He's another friend of ours. Dr. Neil Bernard, uh, reversing diabetes. I mean, these are just, an, an, these are mentors of ours. Mm -hmm. Dr. C Campbell and his family are, are personal friends of ours. Um, but these, these are peer review studies that, uh, as John said, you, you can't deny what the reviews are. And I, t I take what they say, um, but then I, we also add other research from around the world, mm -hmm. the blue zones, exa as oh, an example. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, um, People over we, 100. We talked about uh, healthy at 100. Right. You know, I've, sometimes people get mad at me if they, if they hear me say this, but um, so I've been known to say um, I th that I believe that if people ate a whole foods plant-based diet and other, lived an otherwise healthy lifestyle, no smoking, no drinking alcoholic beverages, right. and exercising regularly and so right. forth, we could probably live indefinitely, or at least way over a hundred before right. we start to go downhill. Right. Uh, I've had people get very angry with me. <laughs> oh no, oh no, we go when the go good Lord wants us to, you know. Uh, we. we <laughs> the good Lord gave us free choice. Free choice, <laughs> and exactly. And if we choose to eat ice cream, meat, and dairy, we our bodies will bear the consequences. Oh yes, you've got some. Um, you've got some other little miniature cookbooks. Grab one of those every time um, Janine does a cooking class. Okay, crooked. Uh, this is crooked cabin farm uh, cooking class restoring so health re one meal at a time. That's our mantra. Crooked cabin farm. And again, for anybody who wants to schedule a time with Janine, crookedcabinfarm at gmail.com. Okay, but that's a typical, every one of these those are is three, a different cooking class. These are three copies picture. of this one, I guess. Um, uh, they're all different. This one, oh, they are? They all are. Oh. Open up and read some recipe this names. One. Oh, yeah. okay. Because these are the um, things people think this is salads. Okay. Uh, cheese popcorn. Cheese popcorn, yeah. Um, good, good but snack. there's no cheese in it. No, Where no, you no. get the cheesy <laughs> taste is from the nutritional yeast. You're plate. good. Right. You're good. Right. Yes, yes. Right. Right. Um, that was a candies and snack class. Pecan pie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, guess what? It's sweetened with maple syrup and honey. Uh -huh. Oh boy! Instead of sugar. sugar. Yes. Sure. Um, and no eggs. No eggs. No eggs. Let's see. But every yeah, pecan. Oh, right. Oh, yes. Um, that's what I do with uh, baking um, at home is I use a tablespoon 
of ground up flax seed mm -hmm. into three tablespoons water. of water and let it sit for um, at least 10 minutes before right. it goes into the substitute. recipe. And that yep. is the egg substitute. Right. We call that a flax egg. Right. A flax egg? A flax oh, egg. yeah. Now, when we get down to about 90 seconds left, if you could let us know, we'll take a brief, we'll give a brief visual tour of the, uh, of the, of the farm okay. where all these cooking classes go on and everything goes on. Uh, oh, okay, you can do that now. Okay, Chris, you've got those, and we'll continue to talk if we can. Okay. Chris, you've got those slides if you want to take a tour of the farm. Okay. But if anybody, Gail, wants to have Janine come and talk, it's crookedcabinfarm at gmail.com. Okay. Drop a note. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is the organic farm, and we can just flip through those as time allows. There's a greenhouse on the left. Oh, there's us. Oh, yeah, my that's gosh. That's the crooked cabin. That's the cooking. crooked cabin. That's where the, we're, uh, we built that for cooking classes because the cooking cabins Oh, that's one of the crooked cabinets. You, so you did the windows that way on yes, purpose? Yes. Well, okay. Yes. We can keep going. Oh, there we are again. Oh. That's the greenhouse and the farm. There are uh, six, 68 raised beds filled with heirloom, organic herbs, and fruits and vegetables. So people can learn not only cooking things, but if they want to learn about some of the ingredients, we grow them on the farm, the, the, the arbor there mm -hmm. that's growing. We, the, oh, there's the a nice picnic spot. We've got that. We've, we, we've got to do some mowing back there. We've, uh, we're not quite done with that development chunk of the farm. That's the, the cabin from the bottom, the raised beds. Again, we've got 68 raised beds filled with organics. When people come out, we give them food to eat and mm -hmm. say, try this, you'll like it. Mm -hmm. The raised beds from the sides. greenhouse oh. everything is grown from uh, what do you call those seeds heirloom, heirloom. seeds heirloom some seeds. of Janine's seeds go back 3,000 years oh more. yeah we yeah. weren't around when they bred them but yeah they're <laughs> they're um, better for you oh that is nice we just put in a pizza oven back there and and we've just learned from from one of your folks here in Jamestown mm -hmm. Morrow taught us how to make uh, pizza crust out of an ancient wheat oh and now we're doing pizza crust we eat a lot of pizza ancient wheat uh, with tomato sauces and vegetables no cheese or nutritional yeast, but we're trying to teach people how to do this. And Janine does a great job. She's, again, got about 150 people that, that are coming to her for help. And we hope folks will give us a call. Oh, we, there's we, your kitchen. We, actually, that's, we, we, we have people that said, hey, I want this stuff. I want emmer flour. I want barbecue sauce. I want these things. Where do I get them? Mm -hmm. And they're kind of hard to find. So what we do when we go to buy emmer flour, because we can't find it locally, we have to buy it in 50 pound bags. Oh, we don't go oh. through 50 pounds quickly. So we formed a little co-op. Oh. We'll bag this stuff, oh, and yeah. that's the farm store. Come in anytime, 24 seven. Reach up, we have it lighted with solar lights. Go in there, find what you want, take it off the shelf, write a check, drop it in the ancient cash register, help yourself, and come visit if you want. So we, we're trying to make this affordable for people, achievable for people. Uh, we're blessed. This this is the mission. This is the uh, absolutely what we're about now. We're here for you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank the you. two of you are such an inspiration, and you must have endless amounts of energy. Yes, <laughs> you know? I it's, do. Didn't used to, but how we eat now? <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope you're going to let me have these to take <laughs> home. Absolutely. <laughs> you know. Um, and thank you so much for coming for coming on. This has been just wonderful. Thank um, you, Gail. Thank you. All I'd say is if they want to touch Janine, crookedcabinfarm at gmail.com or www.crookedcabinfarm.com. Oh, good. Um, and I'll see those of you in the viewing audience on the next episode in a couple of weeks. <laughs>